Idara ran and got water from the stream nearby. She gave him some water to drink and cleaned up his wound thereafter. I can smell some food. Do you have food with you? Please give me a little for I am so hungry, the young man said as he slowly regained consciousness. No other man came for Idara after that day as the news of her bad cooking spread fast and wide all over the village. Welcome to Iagba's Epic Tales. The title of today's story is Eno and Idara and the Cooking Contest. Once upon a time, there were two beautiful young girls named Eno and Idara. Eno and Idara were best friends but lived like sisters for they lived in the same house. Idara had lost her parents at the age of 13 and since then, she had been living with Eno's family as Eno's parents took her in after the death of her parents. They treated and loved her in the same way and measure they do Eno. And so, not many people in the village knew that they were not biologically related, especially the young folks and those who had not been in the village for so long. Eno's parents were glad that they had took in Idara in, for she was a good influence on their daughter. Before Idara came to live with them, Eno had been the lazy type. She would always dodge doing the house shows by pretending to have one sickness or the other. If it wasn't a headache, it would be a running stomach or a chest pain. But all that changed when Idara started living with them. Idara was the opposite of Eno. One would wonder how they are close friends from childhood when they were clearly both different. Idara was always willing to do chores and run errands. And because she got praises and rewards for being industrious from Eno's parents, Eno started learning how to do chores and run errands also in order to get same rewards for herself. And this was a good thing as she grew to no longer be afraid of doing any work and became industrious as Idara. Eno and Idara's bond grew stronger over the years and as they grew into beautiful young women and ripe for marriage. In their village, food and nice dishes were a great yardstick for marriage. Before a man marries a woman, the woman's cooking skills is first tested. Such intending bride would be made to cook for her suitor and his family. Most times, she is tested on how to cook these three major dishes, ekpan kuko, afia ifere, and Utomburu, which they considered as their main delicacies. A woman who successfully prepares all three dishes so well is considered as one who would make a good wife by the Sutio's family, as they believed that these three dishes when always prepared in a home has the ability to foster happiness and satisfaction, thereby reducing conflicts. Every mother made sure to teach their daughters how to cook and most importantly on how to prepare these three dishes. Eno's mother ensured that Eno and Idara were able to prepare these dishes also before they reached womanhood. They were always taught the same time as Eno's mother would call them both to always be with her whenever she was in the kitchen and explain every step to them. The both girls learned how to cook these dishes, but because Idara was one who was always giving to attention and details, 
Her dishes tasted so well whenever she made them, and more better than that of Heno. It tastes so good that her foster parents nicknamed her Magic Hands. And with time, it tasted better than even that of Enos' mother who had taught her. Etim and Inemesit were two young men and best friends also who had fallen in love with Eno and Idara. Etim was interested in Eno and Inemesit in Idara. Since the two friends were close and also like brothers, and since they had both fallen in love with two friends or sisters likewise, they decided to marry the same time. And as their custom demanded, a day was fixed for the intending grooms and their families to come taste the dishes prepared by their intending daughters-in-law. Eno and Idara got to work. They were given two separate areas to prepare their dishes. They were both told to prepare Ekpan Kuko and Otomburu and were both given the same ingredients in equal amounts. When they were done, both girls presented their dishes to their respective groom and their family. Etim and his parents were pleased with Eno and smiled as they savored every bite. But immediately in Emesit and his parents tasted Idara's food, they spat it out immediately. What a horrible meal and a horrible cook, in Emesit's parents said. They mockingly asked Eno's parents and Idara, to test the food Idara had prepared and presented to them. And when they did, they also reacted the same way, spitting out every tiny bit they had put into their mouths. Idara, Eno, and their parents were in shock. Idara was an excellent cook and had earned the nickname Magic Fingers for herself. Why would she choose to jeopardize her chances of marrying Inemesit, who is such a fine and wealthy young man? The reason all confused. Idara was more confused. She had done everything she had always done whenever she was preparing those dishes. As a matter of fact, she had taken extra caution in preparing that day's dishes as it was for a special purpose. What had gone wrong? She asked no one in particular as she cried. In a Messi's parents declared and stood their ground that their son would not marry Idara and in a Messi decided to obey his parents though he had claimed to love Idara. And so, only Etsim and Eno got married. Inemesit got married to another woman and left Idara with a broken heart. No other man came for Idara after that day as the news of her bad cooking spread fast and wide all over the village. Idara's foster parents felt bad for her. She was a good cook and still prepared good dishes in the house after that day. But they couldn't explain what had gone wrong. They had tried to convince few young men who were searching for a wife that Idara was a good girl and a good cook, so that these young men would marry her. But the men had heard the news and would not listen. After that event, Idara became a shadow of herself. It felt more difficult for her since her best friend Eno was no longer with her and because no other man came to ask her hand in marriage. Well, Eno, after a year of being married to Etim, returned back to her father's house as the love between her and Etim grew sour and there was constant fights in their home. 
Idara had missed Eno, but she wasn't pleased that her marriage had ended in such a way. People began to gossip that it was Idara's bad luck around Eno that had made Eno's marriage not to last. These gossips shattered Idara the more. She started taking a walk all by herself to the bush to cry and vent to the supposed spirits of her late parents for not sending good luck her way. She also began taking one of the three important dishes on a daily basis to the bush. She would prepare a different one on a different day and take to the bush. Idara was not eating any of the food she prepared. Neither was she giving it to anyone. Rather, she would throw the food into the air and call on her dead parents to have a taste of her food and tell if her food was not good enough to give her a husband. This she did continually for weeks without the awareness of her foster parents and her best friend Eno. One day, whilst Idara took food to the bush to go cry and throw it into the air like she had been doing, she saw a young man lying almost dead by the bush paths. Is he dead? She asked no one in particular. She went closer and she could hear the young man faintly calling out for help. Idara ran and got water from the stream nearby. She gave him some water to drink and cleaned up his wound thereafter. I can smell some food. Do you have food with you? Please give me a little for I am so hungry, the young man said as he slowly regained consciousness. Idara looked at the basket she had placed the food. The food was for her dead parents and she wasn't ready to give anyone else or stop until she gets an answer from them or they send a husband away. Please, I am hungry, the young man called again, bringing Idara out of her thoughts. She reluctantly gave him the food. After washing him as he faintly ate for some time, she stood up and headed to the stream to go get him more water to drink. Few minutes later, Idara returned, but the young man was gone. She looked around for some time but didn't see him. Hmm. What a weird and an ungrateful fellow, she said and sighed as she returned home. The king of the village passed away about six weeks ago and had been buried. So, it was time for the late king's son, Prince Edidem, to ascend the throne and their custom required that he takes a bride before ascending the throne. The custom of choosing a wife for a king was slightly not different from that of the regular people in the village. All young maidens of marriageable age is required to cook the three special dishes for the king to be and his cabinet members. Three among the girls whose meal were the best among the others will be selected after which they will be taken to the chief priest who would through a revelation from the gods announce the chosen one. This process is usually last for several days as it is not possible for the royal household and cabinet members to eat every meal in one day. Many maidens gave their best, and after the third day, the prince was yet to make a selection. On the third day, Eno and Idara also decided to join the contest. When they got to the palace, Eno was allowed in, but the guards and two cabinet members at the entrance sent Idara away, for they knew about her story. You have come to give the prince your poison you called food. Be gone, live here, 
they said and kicked her out. Idara went home feeling more downcast than she had ever been. The prince was unable to make a decision in time. There was one particular dish he had looked forward to taste, but he didn't. Could it be that she decided not to participate in the contest? He thought to himself. But because he was required to make a choice, he had to select three girls he felt their food tasted okay. Eno was one of those girls. She was happy and looked forward to being selected by the gods as that would mean that she would become queen. At the set day, all three selected girls were presented before the chief priest who would declare the gods' decision and announce the chosen one. This story is quite a long one. Look out for our next video where we will bring you the concluding parts. Thank you for watching. See you in our next video. Bye.